Hi students, this is a recording for Chapter 2, Section 1, Part 2. We're going to be on page 86, and we're going to start with this um, subheading, New Ways of Living, on page 86. The first effect of farming was on people's food supply, but over time, the Neolithic agricultural revolution transformed every part of human culture. So Neolithic, New Stone Age, agriculture, farm, revolution, change. Revolution is one of our vocabulary words. I'm going to underline it in mine. Please don't write in your book. New kinds of shelter. Farmers found ways to build permanent shelters. People used a mixture of mud and straw to form walls. The sun baked and hardened the mixture. People made roofs by placing poles and branches across the tops of the walls and covering them with mud. One of the oldest known farming settlements in the world is a village called Chatalhuyuk. It stood in present-day Turkey more than 8,000 years ago. At its height, a few thousand people may have lived in Chatalhuyuk. The environment provided sources of water and building materials. A British archaeologist described the two-story homes that made up the settlement. The houses of Chatalhuyuk were so tightly packed together that there were few or no streets. Access to interior spaces was across roofs, which had been made of wood and reeds plastered with mud. Reed is like a really strong type of grass. And downstairs, so they came in down the stairs from the roof. People buried their dead beneath the floors. Above all, the interiors were rich with artwork, mural paintings, reliefs, and sculptures, including images of women that some interpreted as evidence for a cult of a mother goddess. Each home had its own kitchen and food storage area. The people grew grains and raised flocks of sheep and goats. And so over here on page 87, we have a little bit more of a close-up of our city of Chatalhuyuk. Here we can see where how people access. This was the door went down. There's no streets in between. People are walking on the roofs. Here's the examples of murals that are inside. Here's an image of a body that was found buried under the floor. Roofs were made from poles covered by layers of mud and reeds, so like really strong like grass. Animal pelts dried in the sun were used to make clothing. People gathered in the shrine room to worship, so it's kind of like a church, a shrine room. And here's again ladders from the roof. Page 88, new kinds of clothing. Agriculture also changed the way that people dressed. For hunter-gatherers, the most important material for clothing were animal hides and furs. Farming provided new materials that were lighter and easier to work with. From Egypt and India to the Americas, farmers domesticated the cotton plant. They learned to weave cloth from plant fibers. Another plant, flax, became a source of linen. Domesticated animals such as sheep and yaks also provided clothing materials. People used wool and other animal hair to form yarn or thread. In China, people later learned to breed silkworms. Surpluses and specialization. Folks, these are our vocabulary words. Surplus and specialization. As crops and herds improved, the amount of food that farmers could produce each year increased. Some families were able to raise a surplus or more than they needed to feed themselves. Surplus is more than you need. So surplus of food is more food than you need to feed yourself. Surpluses, food, surplus food could support a growing population. The size of farming villages thus increased. When there was a surplus of food, when there was extra food, not everyone in a village needed to farm. Some people could specialize. So specialization occurs when people spend most of their time working at a single job or a craft. So rather than spending all their time farming, some people like could get really good at making knives. Other people could get really good at making clothing. They're specializing in something specific, okay? And that's because they had a surplus of food. They didn't have to work so hard to survive, so they could specialize in a job. They could then trade the goods they made for the surplus food grown by farmers. Skilled tool makers 
turned stone into polished axes and knives. Potters shaped clay into bowls. Weavers wove sheep's wool into cloth. A few people also became skilled at metalworking. Early metalworkers heated ore to extract or remove such metals as copper and tin. Social organization. Early farming communities remained small. Like hunting, farming required close cooperation among members of the community. Heads of families consulted to make, page 89, important decisions. They might discuss when to plant and harvest crops or what to do with food surpluses or how to protect the community from outside dangers. Archaeologists have uncovered the remains of several Neolithic villages, such as Scarabray in Scotland. Here's a picture of it right here. In these villages, all homes were more or less the same size. Some historians believe this means that great differences in social standing did not yet exist. Still, having a permanent place to live meant that people could own more possessions. Early farmers filled their homes with furniture, tools, clay pots, and other goods. These items would have been too heavy to move from one campsite to another. Over time, some families accumulated more possessions than others. As surpluses, or extra food, as surpluses increased and people began to specialize or focus on one job, greater social differences emerged. You will read more about this development in the next section.